Hey, hey, people. My name is Seva. I work in Kotlin and Libraries team, and we are responsible for the standard library, Kotlinx libraries, miles of tooling, and some language features around that. I also work at JetBrains, where we create all those products, and mostly they're written in Kotlin. So the developers approach me and ask me about Kotlin, ask for some advice, propose some features, and we chat. And from time to time, I got asked, like, Seva, you have a libraries team, quite a few people, but every release, there's not much added to libraries. Why is that so? Why are you even do what are you even doing? And indeed, if you'll take a look at our arbitrary release notes, there's not much things added. Maybe new class, some deprecation, some experimental changes, not much. And my leadership also asked me the same question, but in a slightly different form. Like, Seva, can you pull out Kotlinx daytime stable by the end of the quarter? And mine says always like, eh, it's complicated, there's a lot of issues there, here. Like, it never satisfies them. So I decided to make this talk instead. And let's start, let's start. Let's talk about something we're all familiar with, strings. We used to have those beautiful functions, to uppercase, to lowercase, and capitalize. They're quite self-explanatory. Under the hood, they implemented with something called locales, which is a cultural property of how days, days of the week are named, how days are formatted, and how some, upper, some letters are uppercased and lowercased. And those functions depend on the default locale of the computer, which means that these functions, uppercase, for example, can return different results in Japan in, in Australia. We always knew that depending on that behavior, especially in such a simple functions, is not a great thing. But we thought we can get away with it. Until all coroutines code compiled in Turkey stopped work working. And some code with arrays. And the exception here, error here is really suspicious, like no such method error, int array of. The problem is, that this method existed from Kotlin 1.0, even earlier, so it doesn't make much sense. But if we'll start digging, we'll find out that there's weird letter, letter i with a weird dot. Sometimes it's not here. So what is the problem? In fact, in Turkish language, there are two letters i, dotted i and dotless i. And if you have English lowercase letter i and you uppercase it in Turkish, or Turkish, in Turkish locale, you get dotted letter, uh, uppercase letter i, which is not an English one, and vice versa. So when, I, when our compiler engineer wanted to generate a function called like interray, they probably had int constant somewhere, they uppercased it or lowercased it, and they received incorrect result. Which leads us to our reason number one, why we can have nice things. Human language is hard. And we tend to forget about that because we communicate in English, write our code in English. If we really like it, we also write in our documentation, probably in English. But it's still, as a language, our native responsibility to support all the languages, all the cultures, all the locales. So what are we going to do? We decided that even if our compiler engineers, who sit in the room next to ours, cannot figure that out, probably it's not the best behavior. We should do something. But we cannot change that. It's going to be a breaking change. So with some back and forth discussions, we decided to just deprecate those functions and provide a replacement, uppercase and lowercase. And it fixes the problem because they use something called root locale, which doesn't depend on where the computer is. But there were three functions. Capitalize is not here. It's also deprecated. And the reason it wasn't on the first slide, on the previous slide, is because its replacement didn't fit in. And the really reasonable reaction of that is like, <laughs> why is it even here? Like, where, where's my proper function? Capitalize, capitalize, something like that. Answer is a little bit complicated. If we are going to use our 100% certified Kotlin way to design APIs, which is Twitter polls, and start asking people in the inter on the internet what do they think capit capitalize what means, we'll figure out that there's no majority in understanding of the word capitalize, which means that if we have a function capitalized in our language, then for more than half of our users, they will get results which they didn't expect, which is not a great thing. But maybe Twitter is not the best place. But even serious financial institutions can figure out what capitalization means. <laughs> but hey, we are not alone here. There are plenty of programming languages, and hopefully they have strings, and probably they even do something with them. So maybe we can take a look at other languages and just borrow some naming. And indeed, there are Python with capitalize, C Sharp with um, to title case, and Ruby with capitalize. So maybe capitalize is a nice name. The catch here is all those functions do a completely different thing, like not slightly different, they're just not transferable. You cannot use one instead of the other. 
which leads us to our next reason why we can have a nice thing. Naming is hard. And sometimes all the beautiful names are taken, and you cannot come up with an even better name. So all you have left to do is to release a SQL. And Python did, and released copy to function. <laughs> so maybe we can come up with a capitalized to function as well. And sometimes we just come up with a better name and get a little bit too carried away, and our function sounds like a Harry Potter spell. But I'm joking, it's a perfectly fine function. Um, let's continue with something pleasant and simple, not strings, time zones. <laughs> and let's take a look at this beautiful date. 29th of December, 2011, and we want to do something with it. We want to add two days to it, to get 31st of December. But we're experienced engineers. We don't really trust computers. So we want to be extra sure that the difference here is exactly two days. So we want to check it. We just subtract one from the other and check how many hours are here. I would expect something around 48. Paul time, who thinks it's going to be 48? Yeah, I'm not really convincing. OK. The answer is, in fact, this code doesn't compile. Um, <laughs> and the reason behind that is time zones. Those dates are calendar dates. They doesn't make much sense without a time zone, because right now it can be 29th of December, and in the United States it can be 28th of December. So we need a time zone. But it, it's not, again, it's not sound really convincing, so I'll give you a better example. There's a country, Samoa, which used to trade, and probably still trades, with Australia. And the accountants decided that it's really hard to do all the bookkeeping with all the time zones, and they decided to change their time zone. The trick here is they changed it from minus 10 to plus 14, meaning they skipped 24 hours. <laughs> to be more precise, there are no 30th of December in Samoa in 2011. It was 29th of December, and then it's 31st of December. <laughs> it's a bit complicated. So if this code were to work in Samoa, this code would print for, uh, 24. There's two days difference, but one day never existed, so it's 24 hours. And we want to fix that, so we add in time zone to the functions, which is already less beautiful and not that nice, but at least it fixes the problem. Or does it? Uh, if we'll write this code and deploy it on user mobile, and the user happened to be at aircraft, which it at the moment of this computation crosses time zone boundary. The default system time zone will change, and this computation will stop making any sense. And th this error would be impossible to debug, impossible to figure out. It's really obscure. It's just incorrect computation. And probably we should do something about that. The answer is let's confine this computation to some syntactic scope. And it's, it's like not that nice, and it's so not obvious. You cannot figure that out. It, ID won't help you. Really disappointing. And reason number three why we can ha have nice things is daytime developers, they're really upset when they're figuring this all out. But real reason is software reflects real world, and real world has a lot of complexities, a lot of historical, political, economical context, and more often than not, it cannot be abstracted away with a nice abstraction. OK, we know that we need time zones. So let's take a look at different date, which happened two months ago or so in Hien, Copenhagen, March 31st. And we want to do some computation again, so we transform it to instant, and we want to save it to log, to database, it doesn't matter. But we already figured out that time is a compli complex thing, and compli complicated thing, and we want to be extra sure that if we'll convert this instant back in the same time zone, without any changes, without no aircrafts, we'll get the same result. And let's check it, and see if it's the same hour. Who thinks it's going to, okay, I, I, fi I figure. <laughs> I won't tell you the answer right now. Let's take a look instead at this <laughs> beautiful gentleman, George Hudson. George Hudson was a bug hunter, but he wasn't bug hunter like we are. He was hunting real bugs, insects. And apparently, when you have a 9 to 5 job and it's winter and you just finish your dinner, it's already too late and too dark, and you can't find any insects because they're all under the rock somewhere. And he was really frustrated about that. And he decided to do what any other reasonable person would do. He decided to change the flow of time in New Zealand. So he was thinking really hard. And in 1895, he came up with a really decent proposal about that. And like with any decent proposals that were perfectly thought through, it was almost immediately accepted. So 30 years later, in 1927, 
New Zealand uh, passed an act about what we all now know as a daylight saving time, when we shift our clock one hour forward and backward, depending on whether it's winter or summer, to have a little bit more sunlight in the winter. And the reason number five, why we can have nice things. Some people just want handbags in winter. So if we'll continue and uh, consider this again, what will happen if this computation happens at daylight saving time transition? If it's summertime transition, it means that 2.30 might never exist at all. Like it was 2 o'clock and then it's 3 o'clock. And if it's winter, uh, winter time transition, which isn't the case, then this uh, time might have uh, existed two times on your clock. And nothing in this API and this signature tells you about that. So probably you have back in your code two times a year or three times a year. It's, and it's really, it's hard to figure that out. And maybe we can just round it up. Like, should we even care? Luckily, I had a chance to figure that out when I was preparing to this talk. I have a friend of mine, Vlad. Hi, Vlad, by the way. And in, at the uh, 30th of March, he was trying to go to sleep. And he has his smart home thing, Alice. And so he asked, Alice, please set an alarm for 8.30. OK, answered Alice. I set an alarm for 9.30. Wait, but okay, maybe somebody thought that my friend has to sleep for eight hours. It's a reasonable thing to do. Alarm fight at 10.30. <laughs> yeah, probably we don't want our friends to miss our alarm. So we should change this signature. We should do something about it. And a reasonable thing to do would be to add something that kind of tells developer, please tell me what to do if this time doesn't exist or exists twice. And it's not that nice. And the problem with that is it's not the case. This is a, the signature of Kotlin next daytime, which leads us to reason number six. Sometimes we just make mistakes, and it's all our fault. And because of that, our friends miss our alarms. Like, it happens. Luckily, we can fix that. And we are going to fix that. But out of this talk, you might imagine that there are two ways of designing APIs. Slow, when you really really think through, and all the solutions are beautiful, and there are no bugs, and you're happy with that, and fast. When you add some things to the library, and it breaks, and you're fixing it, and you're really regretting about that, and you have to maintain it for 10, year, 10 more years. But it's not. Either it's fast, and you regret about that, or it's slow, and you regret about that. But there's a silver lining. If you made it slow, and really thought through about all the corner cases, all the all the weird peculiarities, and you acquired all the domain expertise. Maybe nobody will get fired for using your API. That's it. That's the reason why we can have nice things. So please, thank you. Don't forget to vote on somebody on your badge. <laughs> and <laughs> and if you are still with me, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.